excited to bring on the guest that I have on today. We've known each other over time. I love that when you know people, you interact, and then you get to meet each other. We met each other live right here on Dominion TV in the studio last year. None other than Evangelist Wanda Briscoe. Come on, Evangelist. Come on and just say hi. And I'm going to tell the people just a little bit about you. Then you're going you're gonna to tell them a little bit more about you. Blessings. Blessings, everyone. And it is such an honor to be in your presence again. Apostle Deborah Allen, a wonderful and amazing woman of God. And I am just thankful for our divine connection where we physically met last year on Dominion TV. It is. And so we're, I'm going to explain to you why we are giddy today. Fierce TV, you have to walk fiercely into your destiny and we are giddy because this woman is a best-selling author speaker coach and she is the host of wanda's warrior but we are giddy because she has a very very new book that's just launch that's bestseller and we are talking about that today and so evangelist wanda and i want you to tell us a little bit i'm not gonna get the title yet because i want you to tell us a little bit about what you do who you are and then we're gonna drop this new book title <laughs> amen um i'm an evangelist i have been traveling for several years now just spreading the gospel didn't start out um, being, you know, thinking that I would be an evangelist or ministry, even though I'm a PK kid, you know how we try to run from God, but then God knows how to pull you in. So it's like, you have to accept the call. And I am a published author, a speaker, international host of my show, Wanda's Warriors, which will start back up soon. Um, I published two books on my own and co-authored five books, oh. two of those books, a bestsellers. Yeah. And so I'm a grandmother now. One um, granddaughter is one and a new granddaughter will be here July of 2022. So I am just doing whatever God calls me to do. And I go wherever God leads me to go. This is such a season of enlargement. And so as I'm listening, you're saying you're writing, you, you've done some anthologies. We are authors. I love being an author. You are a PK kid. Uh, I got some PK kids and they definitely run, which I don't even understand why y'all try to run from us when you know it's your destiny, but we're going to yes. leave that alone. But it just seemed like the pastor's children have to run. I think it's because we reel you in early and all you've done is church. And then that you do got to get like a, I got to decide if this is what I want for me. I think that's, I think that's a legitimate thing to say, but I'm glad you back because the kingdom, I'm glad I'm back too. <laughs> the kingdom needs you and you yeah. are doing great things. And yes, we are smiling because I cannot have it. I can't help it today because as we're looking at the new book, The Tears of Hannah, I have seen this phenomenal. Uh, this is a journal. The book is absolutely beautiful. Thank um, you. I, I looked at it and I was like, man, that is powerful. Talk a little bit about being an author, and then I want you to talk about the book. Okay. I never thought that I would be an author. I've always been a reader, but in 2011, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, and when I would come home from radiation treatments, I started writing in a journal, and from that journal was birth books, and during that season, um, God was just dealing with me with different scriptures in the, in the Bible that I had never even seen before. And so I always quote my favorite scripture, 
which is Isaiah 66 and nine. And uh, one of the versions says, I will not cause pain without allowing something new to be born, says the Lord. And at that time, I was like, what can be birth new from breast cancer? A me, a new me was birth. A ministry was birth. God took the misery from breast cancer and allowed me to educate our community since we are impacted more and to just become a speaker and to birth more books. So when we're going through our trials and tribulations, yes, we cite Romans 8, 28, but Isaiah 66 and nine broadens that scripture and makes it really a personal thing for us. So that is my favorite scripture. I am in awe, oh my God. And I believe this is true, evangelist, that the greatest battles of our lives will be the greatest victories. Let's just go there. Let's yes. just go there. Let's just stop. I want you to talk about that. How the greatest battle, come on, because you battled this thing. Yeah. If this ain't nothing to play with, I'm sorry. Come on, Fierce yeah. TV, on Dominion TV. Let me tell you some breast cancer is nothing to play with when we're battling for our lives. And so talk mm -hmm. about the experience. How could you birth such beauty? Oh my God, because it is beautiful. In such a hard place. It was, that you know how good. people will say, God will give you, that, that was good. That was yes. real good, Apostle. How God will give you beauty for ashes. Yes. And I was in a dark season. I mean, a oh dark God. season. And actually, when you talked about how PK kids run away from God, I, I was in that season. I had just walked away from a marriage and four months later I get diagnosed with breast cancer so I was going through breast cancer and a divorce at the same time and so but I chose to fight for my life and so the first book that was birthed is called the fight within because you know God had to birth something within me I didn't know that there was a fighting spirit within me a lot of times there are things that are lying dormant and God will allow certain situations and trials to awaken what he has called us to be. And, you know, God was like, look, you ran long enough and I need you because there's a work for you to do. And I say a lot of times that I was like Jonah, you know, Jonah was in the whale for three days, but I left my home state of Maryland and went to Atlanta and ran for 25 years. I was in Atlanta for 25 years. God did not bring me back to Maryland until 2016. And then, you know, I had some doors that were opening while I was in Atlanta, but it was like, once I moved back to Maryland and I gave God my full yes, you know, apostle, sometimes we give God a halfway yes. God, I'll serve you in this area but I'm not going to serve you in this area over here because I still got one foot in the world and one foot in the, in the kingdom. But God wants our full yes. And once I gave God my full yes and said, I'm all in, God was just birthing things and birthing things and connecting me with divine connections to people. And I've had so many tragedies in my life I mean, I had a TIA at the age of 38. I did recently wow. did a post on Facebook about this, a mini stroke, 38 years old. Then I get breast cancer. I've gone through two divorces and then the murder of my youngest son in 2018. Wow. All of this trauma, but I still did not doubt God. I still kept my faith my and God Lord, still God. kept me to hey. be able to minister to Glory people to who are broken in these areas and even in my valley or in the pit you know we talked about the pit before on dominion TV. Yes, we even, did. even in that pit god was preparing me for such a time as this in order to get to that palace so i had to go through all of that to get to this point and to experience 
the tears of Hannah because I've waited, I've cried like Hannah for different things. Yes. And then, you, you know, Hannah had to be around people who mocked her. Panina was a mocker yes. and, you know, belittled her and, you know, sometimes make you feel less than. And, but she still kept trusting God. She still kept yes. praying. She still kept trusting God. It was her obedience. Her, our obedience is so important and because of her obedience in the end she got the victory yes you brought tears to my eyes because we have suffered you don't look like you suffered i'm sorry evangelist yeah. you looking young you looking amazing when i met you i thought you was a warrior Thank i've you. always thought you was a warrior. You have that vibe. And we run because sometimes we don't see who we really are. But the things that we go through make us who we were born to be. And that is one of the greatest things I think I've learned over time with age, with tests. The things that wounded me, I'm just saying. See, we ain't going to go mm -hmm. here today. We're not going to be crying. <laughs> on Dominion TV. I'm not a crier, but I feel that thing. The things that have broken us, they have become our greatest victories in all that you have been through. Girl, we still standing. I'm just saying, we still yes. standing. We still standing. And we still believe. Come on, woman of God. I we still believe. believe. Yes, Don't there's a just song. Talk about that. There there's a song by Shekinah Glory, which is one of my favorite gospel groups. They're timeless. And the song is called Broken. And in one verse of the song, it says, I've been broken and bruised, wondering will, stop, will still God use? And a lot of times we get to that point and we're like, God, I'm broken. I'm at my lowest point. How can you use me? But that is when God can use you. I've been broken and bruised, wondering, will still God use? That is how he can use you because you've been broken. You've been on, as the older, gener older saints would say, you've been on the backside of the mountain. Because a lot of people now will look at me and be like, where has she been? Who Balance. is this person? It, that valley experience yes. will mold you that valley experience gives you character that valley experience gives you a closer walk to god with god that valley experience will also make you hear god more clearly especially when you're walking in the prophetic My it's gosh. very important to be able to hear god clearly and it's an also an isolation time you know, when you're walking in the prophetic and you, you know, you feel lonely, you're all alone, but that's when God can use you because you don't have all of those outside distractions. I love what you're talking about. The Tears of Hannah. It is available. Definitely go to Amazon and get your paperback book. It is an ebook and a paperback, but you're going to want a journal because it is a journal buy the paperback let's go let's push it and um i want to really say that because the tears of hannah it was one of the things that i really a story that was dear to my heart because there were some things i wanted god to do for in my life mm. and they took a season and i felt the tears of hannah i did um but i believe that we are mighty because we don't die in the process. Oh my God. We didn't Thank die. Oh, no. baby. I've been through some stuff that would have killed other people. But Evangelist yes. Wanda, we did not die. We did not. Yeah, we getting emotional on her. I got to pull myself <laughs> together because it's something <laughs> moving on this CV. Come on. Wanda, Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, we Jesus. did not die. <laughs> We did not die. And, and that's something that you have to realize when you're going through the process. My bishop always says, 
The best way out is through. The best way out is through. Yeah, you're when you're in that thing, you may not be like, God, how can I get through this? But we have to understand that as we're going through the process, God is processing us yeah. in the process. And, and it don't feel good. It Woo. doesn't feel good at all. It feels uncomfortable. And but it's like God is like, I need you to get to this point. And then after you get through it, sometimes you look back and you be like, God, you mean I had to go through all of that yes. to get to this point? And that's how I look at my life now. It's like, I'm not where I was when I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2011. God had to do a lot of processing to get to this point to prepare me for the worldwide stage. You know, I just got an invitation to be a worldwide speaker in Paris, France in October of 2022. Paris was a dream I had. I never thought in, how do people say, a million years yeah. that I would be a speaker, but I had to go through the process to get to that point for God to say, now you're ready, my daughter. Now you're ready. And we also have to be careful to not go ahead of God because you know things not going to go our way if you go ahead of God you have to let him prepare you and don't walk ahead of him i think the process make us yeah when we salty with God when we're frustrated when we're crying all those things but it was good for me that yeah, i was that afflicted I was oh my Amen. god oh my, it had to be Y'all mess with me today. But it had to be, right? It had to be. Because it was purpose. He made you in the storm. And a lot yes. of times we want the glory, but we don't want the battle. There is mm, greatness in us, but it's only yes. birthed through the trying of our faith, through God burning stuff off of us. Come on, because he's burning Ooh, some Lord. stuff off of us i'm just saying he's burning some stuff off of us and that is so true um he's changed us um i want you to talk a little bit about because we're gonna we just in this group i want you to talk about being a speaker and a coach being a speaker um was something that i thought would be on the back burner. I'm not the most outspoken one of my siblings. I'm more of the, the laid back, calm tone person. And so when God, because at the time when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I was living in Atlanta, Georgia. And so when I would travel back and forth from Atlanta to Maryland to give speeches on breast cancer, you know, I was very apprehensive because I was like, God, why would you use me? Because I'm not the loudest one of my siblings. That's how I looked at it. Sometimes we put our own self in a box. But when God opened that door and I just became more comfortable in speaking with people and just loving on people. And, you know, God has just used that for his glory. And one of the platforms that God had to really deal with me in um, going through breast cancer and divorce at the same time, I developed a spirit of unforgiveness. Come on. I, I, Talk and, about and I'm it. just being transparent. Talk about that, it. that spirit of unforgiveness was there. And then God had to show me that unforgiveness is also a cancer. Yes, Come I on. was battling the physical cancer called breast cancer, mm. but I was dealing with a spiritual cancer called unforgiveness and God really had to deal with me on that and so once I learned how first to forgive myself for things that I've done to myself and to people and allow people to do to me then God allowed me to walk in that authority freely and I started coaching people on unforgiveness and even people would reach out to me that had breast cancer and a lot of your holistic centers there are medical reports that try to make a this uh distinguish that cancer and unforgiveness can go hand in hand oh my. and so 
I started, you know, speaking more on unforgiveness. That became a platform. I started taking classes and I just recently got my certification to be a forgiveness coach. Okay. We need it. Holding stuff is a yeah. cancer in us. Unforgiveness. Uh, and we do have to be honest and true about the fact that we all have struggled with it. We all have struggled with holding grudges, being mad. Yes. But it, it's it's for not it's for nothing. It 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 hurts us. It hinders us. And yeah. the same measure that we give grace to people, that's the grace God gives to us. And that's scary. Now that's scary <laughs> because we really yes. got to acknowledge the change is in us. But look at how far you come. Uh, best-selling author. Tell the people how they can reach out to you and get in contact with you. Because I want you to flow a little prophetically. But before we get, I want them to be able to reach you. Tell them how they can reach you. Tell them about your show, Wanda's Warrior, and all that too. Thank you. If they can reach me on Facebook at Wanda Briscoe. My website is wandabriscoe.org. Um, email Wanda's Warriors and the number one at gmail.com. On Instagram, it's I am Wanda Briscoe. And, you know, I'm just, I'm here to serve. And you have to be a servant first. Yes. And to be obedient to what God calls me to do. You know, he has called, as an evangelist, you know, you travel from different states. You know, I've traveled to Mississippi and different places to just minister to people dealing with unforgiveness and wherever God calls me, mm. I'll go, you know, people reach out to me that I've Ooh. never physically met. And they're like, we was referred to you by this person or that person. We need your prayers. Can you pray with me? And I pray with them, whatever yes. they're going through. I help grieving mothers, you know, yes. even though I'm still fresh in this grieving process but you don't stay in that it's been three years and God has allowed will allow your misery to become a ministry and that's what God has allowed me to do to use my voice to help other people that you can still birth things through pain because that is when God has your attention and he can use you more effective in that and so I just want people to understand that yes, you're going to go through trials and tribulations. And I want them to read this scripture. And it's Philippians chapter 1, verse 12. And I love the English standard version. And it says, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. So a lot of times what, that unexpected crisis that you're going through, it's not for you. It's to advance yes. God's gospel. And we have to get that, Mind like, you. you know, God, oh you may have God. lost your job, but what has God oh called God. you to do? God may be causing, want you to birth a, a business for the gospel. And so what you're going through, that unexpected crisis, that unexpected trial, that storm has a ministry too. That's another book that I wrote. It is yes. all to advance the gospel. And one thing that I've learned is, you know, sometimes we put a negative connotation on affliction. But in the Bible, it says it was good that I was oh, afflicted. It yes. was good that I went through breast cancer. I always say breast cancer. I know you didn't just say that. Life. Woman of God, you didn't just say that. that. You didn't just man. say, I know you didn't it, say yes, that. Yes, I did. Oh, it my was God. good that I was afflicted. It was good that I went through breast cancer because you know why? Breast cancer brought me back to God and I needed breast cancer and God to deal with me with forgiveness to go hand in hand because I couldn't have had one without the other. It was good that I was afflicted even in divorces because now it has taught me to wait for God to send the one he has for me. A lot of times, you know, we'll pick who we want and then we get mad at God when things don't go the way that they went. But it's like God didn't send them anyway. Yes. God, so the, tip, the tears of Hannah teaches you how to wait, how to wait patiently. So I want people to get this book and I got homework in there for you to do. 
for you to write down some things. Yes. <laughs> we gonna get free. I want people you got me to be up able today. to Come on. be free. <laughs> to be free we have too many people that are walking and with chains on too many people that are even bound in the church yeah. but i want people to be free I'm, if god did it for me god can do it for yes, you god. all that i have gone through My it god. wasn't for me hey. god, everything How about my shit? cancer oh i mean who god. can take go through a tragedy yes. of your child being murdered and God uses my. that to minister to others. My only God. God can do Only that. God can only do go Only God can do Only that. God. Only God. Because there's God. healing when you work. There's yes. healing in purpose. And that's yes. what I learned, evangelists. As I work, God healed it. Come on. You yes. work it and he's healing it. He's healing. And I always, I love to write. I write something every day and I talk about that in a journal. And so one of my sayings that I say is I write to heal. Woo. That is my mm. healing place is mm. writing. I'll go by the water or I'll just sit quietly in a place and I write to heal. And I want the world to be healed through, the, through my writings. Reach out to this mighty warrior has she been through some things for sure but the tears of hannah mm. it did something to me as we are on here as we are talking it's shifting things in my heart it's shifting things in my mind it reminds me that we gotta go through the process we can't veto we can't go past it but it was necessary he will bring you through. And yes, we all going to have those tears of Hannah. Ooh. But trust me, my brother and my sister, we going to get through this victoriously. In Jesus' name, amen. Go to WandaBriscoe.org. Get this woman a powerhouse. Thank you for joining us today on Fierce tv thank you for being with us what a mighty word see you guys make sure remember be fierce and walk fiercely into purpose bye y'all